East Africa Emerging Potash Company, South Boulder Mines, is currently on the development path at its world-class Kaluli Potash project in southern Eritrea. Today I am joined by the company's CEO and Managing Director, Paul Donaldson, to provide an overview of the company, its flagship asset and the potash market. Good afternoon, Paul. Good afternoon. Paul, what are the four main reasons to invest in South Boulder Mines? The four main reasons to invest in South Boulder Mines revolve around the Kaluli Potash project itself. First, it's a large shallow mineralisation. Over a billion tonnes of potassium bearing salts have been defined since drilling started in 2010. And the mineralisation actually starts at 16 metres, it runs down to 140 metres. And that actually makes the resource amenable to open cut mining, which is a proven safer method uh, than underground mining and gives better resource recovery overall. In comparable mining methods such as underground mining or solution mining, about 40% of the resource is compromised. That doesn't take place uh, with open cut mining. You basically get full resource um, utilisation. Second reason is that the combination of potassium bearing salts within the resource are highly favourable for low energy input, high potassium yield conversion to potassium sulphate, which is a premium potash fertiliser and it, it achieves a substantial price premium in the market. It's geologically scarce and the combination of salts highly favourable for the production of that potash product. The third reason is the proximity to the coast, which simplifies the logistics of the project. We're only 75 kilometres from the Red Sea coast at the Kaluli mine site, and 180 kilometres from the Port of Masawa in Eritrea, which is a key import-export facility. So access to the market is relatively easy, and this is the closest known potassium sulphate generating centre to the coast globally. The fourth reason is the partnership that we have with the Eritrean National Mining Company. We're in a joint venture uh, with the, the Eritrean National Mining Company. It's a 50-50 joint venture. And we see that as a key enabler uh, to bring the project into production. So I would say they're the four key reasons to invest in our company. South Boulder Mines is currently progressing with the development of the Kaluli project. What are the company's future plans at the project? Well, our immediate focus is on the completion of the pre-feasibility study and we see that as an exercise to lock in uh, a, a module size with a high level of certainty and we will take that through to the definitive feasibility study uh, phase and completion. That's expected to be completed in June next year and following that we'll start seeking funding for the project and, and developing the construction. The immediate priority is to bring a potassium sulphate into production and that's probably about a two-year construction schedule from the information we have currently. And after that we will develop the resource to its full potential. Our focus is on a modular approach to the resource with a focus on risk mitigation and full resource utilisation. And what full resource utilisation means, developing the entire resource to its full potential it doesn't just contain potassium bearing salts, it contains a wide variety of salts and markets exist for all of the salts that are in that resource. So we want to focus on bringing everything into the market that has got a place in the market economically and we'll do that in a staged and pragmatic manner. South Boulder Mines is expecting to produce high grade potassium sulphate using Kaluli salts and PFS processing design. Could you discuss the reasons why South Boulder Mines intends to produce potassium sulphate rather than potassium chloride? The resource actually is better suited to the production of potassium sulphate. The variety of salts that sit within the resource are suitable for low energy input, high potassium yield conversion to potassium sulphate. And by extracting all of the potassium bearing salts from the resource, we actually reduce the mining strip ratio. So we get a lower strip ratio and as I mentioned earlier, potassium sulphate actually achieves a substantial price premium in the market relative to potassium chloride, which is the more common potash. So effectively we get a higher margin, a you know, higher value product at a lower operating cost. It's geologically scarce globally as well, so we actually feel that this is certainly the best potash fertiliser product to bring in from the Kaluli resource. The more attractive economics also allow us to scale the, the size of the development down because the economics are much more favourable. Paul, can you provide some insight into the potash market and the key demand drivers for growth? 
Well, potash is a generic term used for you know, potassium bearing minerals or manufactured chemicals primarily used as fertilizer. But there are a range of potash fertilizers. The most common is potassium chlor chloride. Uh, but there are also potassium sulfates and potassium magnesium sulfates. Importantly, potash is a consumed, non-substitutable, essential agricultural commodity, and its growth is underpinned by excellent fundamentals. And the three key drivers of growth, the growing population, and the world's population is growing by about 80 million people per year, a reduction in arable land, so the land available for growing crops is reducing as development increases into the future. And the third is changing dietary preferences, which is particularly relevant to developing economies. So as people's disposable income increases, uh, their dietary preferences change, and that increases the intensity of cropping and agriculture in general. Thank you for your time today, Paul. Thank you.